coming up on the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show today. We're going to be talking about great tips for growing tomatoes. As well as water collection, how you can do it, should you do it, and how to go about doing it. And we have author and radio show host from Nova Scotia, Canada, Nikki Jabor. As well as your garden questions. And that starts right now. It is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show on 860 AM WNOV and W293CX 106.5. Wherever you may be listening, however you may be listening, whether through those particular stations, the TuneIn app, the Simple Radio app, or through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com website, I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner. Hi, Baird. The WisconsinVegetableGardener.com is our website that contains over 1,100 garden videos, short and long format, to help you grow better. And you can find a lot of more information than just videos on the website. We are live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, so there's a number of ways in which you can contact us during the next hour on the program. And one is the IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline. IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard helps naturally protect your plants from damaging sunburn. Uh, Insects and rodents protects newly installed plants and trees. Shields prune and damage surfaces for use on your roses. Fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivorganics.com. You can call us anytime during this show at 414-444-5250. Yeah, that's right. You can also email us at any time at twvgshow at gmail.com. Or you can tweet us. Our Twitter handle is twvgshow or just hashtag twvg. You can simply do that at any time. You can also text TWVG to 345-345 to sign up for our weekly email. So we're going to get into, it's kind of a gloomy day and cold day here, but we're going to get into how to grow tomatoes, Holly. And there's a number of ways. Tomatoes are one of the most popular plants or vegetables people grow in their garden. And yeah, even can, even people who just grow some, like who grow a lot of flowers, a lot of times they'll just grow a couple tomato plants to uh, to have those fresh tomatoes. So it's definitely a very important topic in when it comes to gardening. So number one thing is we got to have full sun, six plus hours, preferably seven plus hours of sunlight to grow these tomatoes. You you got you need to know what you're going to. Grow the tomatoes for what your end result intentional use for these are. Right. So if you're going to use them for slicing, for canning, for snacks, what are you doing with those tomatoes? Then so then you want to figure out where you're going to plant these tomatoes. And, and I understand the full sun. We co- covered that. But what do you have a lot of space? Do you have not very much space? That will determine what category of tomato that you want to purchase, whether you buy them, at, whether you've got them started already from seed, or you buy them from Blue Mail's Landscape and Garden Center, or your your independent garden center where you're located at. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You want to determine where you're going to put them. Do you have, like Joey said, you have a lot of space or not? Um, are you going to do containers? Are you doing a, like a raised bed situation? What are you doing? So that would determine whether or not you want to get an indeterminate or bush variety or indeterminate vine variety. Quickly uh, and simply, I guess, explain. We do this talk multiple times a year, and we're, we're going to take our 50-minute talk and condense it down to about 12 and a half minutes to get you the important aspects of w- how you can better successfully grow tomatoes in your backyard. So bush variety and and, 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 and vine variety, what, what does that mean? Sure. So bush variety is a, what's called a determinate variety. Basically, it's going to grow, it's going to put on a fruiting of tomatoes for a couple weeks at most, and then it's then it won't be putting on any more tomatoes. So it's like a it's like a short I don't want to say short term but it's not it's not something that once you have that once it puts out that fruit and is done it's not going to put any more fruit out. On like the a, other hand, is a vine tomato which is going to continue to grow, put out tomatoes throughout the season, and until basically you either kill it, pull it out of the ground, or frost kills it. So if you're going to be a, if you if you intend to can a lot of tomatoes, and you want all that fruit ready to can at one time, determine it would be your choice because unless you want to can slowly right right mm-hmm. or you want you know you're like this weekend i'm going to do some and next weekend and then whatnot and, and indeterminate or the bush variety the determine is good for containers small areas compact variety indeterminate if you have space and let them vine you could you could still grow well, determinate you can indeterminate in a, in a container in a straw bale in a raised bed whatnot that's there's no problem with that it's just that you just have to going. it just keeps going so you might have to support a little bit or stake it. You definitely want to stake your tomatoes. That's for sure. Fifty percent of your tomato loss 
is you will have 50% loss if you do not stake or cage your tomatoes. We it did this experiment a couple of years ago. We did a Florida weave. It's where you, you can look it up online. It's where you um, put your tomatoes, plant your tomatoes in a row, and then you use strings to allow the tomatoes to grow through and hang off of instead of using a cage. So we let the one row on the ground. Let it be. Uh, they vined all over the place. We lost 50% of the production because as they were getting ripe, they would start to begin to rot on the ground, the moist ground. Bugs would get them. So, yeah, 50% loss if you don't cage them uh, and get them off the ground. Now, a lot of people will say, well, what do you put in the hole at the time of planting? And there's a lot of things that can go in that planting hole, and you don't want to, you know, everybody has their own special recipe. So what what is what we put in the hole is probably completely different than what you did or your mother did or your grandmother did or your uncle did. This is how we do it. Right. So we add sustain fertilizer, which is made from pine bark and turkey droppings. And it's a sustainable fertilizer. It helps increase the water holding capacity of your soil. It helps enhance the buffering. And buff- soil buffering, we don't have to get much into this, is when the soil helps kind of ward off and filter through the bad things. Like, so, like an acid rain. Like, an like acid a small rain. acid, yeah. Yeah, like you can't repels go... Repels sp- it. Right, repels it a little bit. Not like you can't go spray your plants or your, your ground with weed and feed and expect the soil to bounce or back. Or pour a gallon of bleach on it. Or pour a gallon of bleach on it. But it's something like acid rain, maybe a little bit of some sort of chemical runoff or something. It's nature's protection of the soil. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. So we use that. And then some people, add, we get a lot of questions about eggshells. Yes, eggshells are good for adding calcium to your soil. But you want to basically pulverize them. So, you know, you make some, make yourself some eggs in the morning, set those eggshells on the counter so they can dry off a little bit. And then once they're, once they're dry, you can put them in a food processor or a coffee grinder or something like that so that they get turned into a powder. You can also microwave them for a minute and just pulverize it. People will put powdered milk in the whole I would thing. not microwave an eggshell for a minute. Okay. I probably would do about 10 seconds. Okay. Uh, some people will put powdered uh, milk in the hole at the time of planting. Uh, get, that has calcium. Now, our soil, most of our soil, if you get a soil test, ha- have plenty of calcium available. But the problem is that it gets locked up and not available for the plant to uptake because the soil gets too dry, and that's when you get that blossom in rot. You harvest the tomato, and the bottom third of it is completely black and rotten, and pretty much it's gone all the way through the tomato. That is... An inconsistent watering. If you consistent water your plants, keep the soil moist, allow the roots to be able to pick up the necessary nutrients and micronutrients in the soil to develop the fruit as well as the plant properly, you're not going to have any problem or decrease the problem a lot. A lot of people will um, put Epsom salt in the hole at the time of planting, thinking that that will combat that early, that uh, blossom in rot. That's simply not the case. Magnesium sulfate, yes, is a, is a micronutrient in which the plant needs to grow and flourish and lush and, and green, but it has no uh, combat to calcium deficiency or calcium loss. Right. So that's, um, that's important to know. I think it definitely is something that a lot of people face, and it's good for them to know that information. Um, there's also things like the tomato hornworm. Um, I don't know... If many people had that last year, I know we had it on one plant. It kind of, I think it just depends on the season and how. And you don't have to worry about that be. until late June, early July, and we'll cover that in a. Here's what's happening in your problems in your garden in June, uh, and we'll go over all the little things. But okay. yeah, tomato hornworm, early blight, uh, that thing. But so we've got our tomato. We've got our. We determined what variety we want. Okay, we so want. Yeah. We're, we're reaching. <clears throat> excuse me. We're reaching mid May. Mm-hmm. So now. People are thinking about Memorial Day weekend, right. planting, when am I going to plant my tomatoes? We've had this weird second un- winter. Un- cra- crazy. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> second winter, I don't know, then we had like summer one day or a couple days, and now it's spring again or fall or who knows what it is. So you have to think about like how or when you're going to plant mm-hmm. them, essentially. So you want your root zone where you're going to plant those tomatoes to be at about 50 degrees at night, 50 to 55 50, yeah, 55 optimal. 55 is optimal. Consistent. Consistently. So, like, if we're looking at the forecast this week, it's supposed to be 70s for the high, but that doesn't mean that the nighttime temperature is going to be consistently so the soil stays at 55 degrees. So that's what you're thinking about. You're not thinking about the daytime temperature. You're thinking about the root zone and nighttime, and nighttime temperature. Right, and that's the key. That is the key. Uh, because if you – and also you – If, if you don't know what root zone is, it's usually about 6 to 8 inches below the surface of the soil. You can take your meat thermometer 
and you can you can do that. There's also soil uh, temperature readers, but a meat thermometer works just fine. Right. So we want to plant those at the appropriate time, 55 degrees minimum, nighttime temperature, soil temperature in that range as well. We also, if we're buying our starts from Blue Mel's or your independent garden center, you can just plant them right away. If you if you got them inside, you got to harden them off, and that is a transition from uh, acclimating them from indoors to outdoors, and you can find that. We've covered that on the program before, but essentially you gradually take them out for a little bit each day and bring them forward farther out into sunlight, you start in shade and work your way out because the, the, the plants can't acclimate. You just can't put them out in the sun and the temperature change. They will die uh, within a couple of hours, so keep that in mind as well. But, yeah, we, we've – and then you always want to water. About an inch of water a week. If you're in a container, I mean, how is it? How do you judge that? How, you just want to water on a regular basis right, you more wanna, than – you yeah. want to be consistent. So – you would just say, okay, on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm going to make sure I'm watering, or if it rained that day, I'm just consciously thinking about what what the soil moisture level is. Because you have to take care of these. These are just like children. If you don't maintain your garden or take care of the plants, you're not going to have the reward at the end of the season or, or in the middle of summer of harvesting and having homegrown produce. That's the thing. Uh, so, yeah, we want a consistent water. We want to check and be vigilant on the, the problems that may persist with... Uh, the, the plant, uh, keep that in mind. But, yeah, cage them, uh, put fertilizer. And if you're going to put, like, an all-balanced fertilizer in the whole of the time of planting, really no more than a triple tin because that's not – there's more fertilizer there than the plant is going to be able to pick up over the growing season. Right. So you want something like a 5.55, five, 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 something within that range. 5 to 10. 4.64, four, yeah. four, uh, 7 five seven it yeah. doesn't have to be exactly five 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 or ten 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 but something within that range uh and mulch them we heavily encourage mulch around these plants whether it's leaves shredded leaves dry leaves chemical free uh dry grass clippings straw will work uh whatever you can get to prevent uh to, to cover the soil because in nature all soil is covered mm-hmm. forests yeah, walk- prairies right. uh, un, un- agricultural fields, you know, that, that's, everything's covered to, to prevent and help uh, keep alive the microbial life and the soil web under the, the ground. So it'll also prevent water evaporation quicker. It'll slow that down as well as And it helps kind of smother out weeds mm-hmm. too. So you definitely want to think about mulching your plants, all of your plants, but tomatoes is nice too because it does help kind of hold that in. So that's just a little snippet of how we grow and how we would advise you to grow your tomatoes. You can certainly email us at twvgshow at gmail.com with additional growing questions. And uh, if you're, uh, when we come back, we're going to get ready and talk about water collection on your property. And if you're about ready to walk away from the radio, don't worry about it. Download the Simple Radio app for free. Search WNOV 860 and take us along with us. Take us with you for the rest of the show. But right after this, it's all about water collection. Got a question? Email the show at twbgshow at gmail.com. Here at Outpost Natural Foods, it's not just that we're community-owned that sets us apart. It's the fabulous foods we sell. We celebrate Earth Day every day by offering our customers the finest natural and organic food selections in greater Milwaukee. Outpost local farmers and vendors provide our stores with a delicious selection of fresh seasonal produce that you won't want to miss. Outpost stores are located in Milwaukee, Wauwatosa, Bayview, and Mequon. We're a real Milwaukee original where anyone can shop and anyone can join. For the whole scoop about Outpost, we invite you to visit www.outpost.coop. Do you enjoy hanging baskets but struggle to keep them properly watered? The Plant Booster Self-Watering System is a mechanical system that will ensure optimal soil moisture at all times by reacting to the weight of each plant. The weight of each plant tells the system how much water it needs. Unlike a timer control system where all plants get water at the same time, whether they need it or not. Also ideal for condos or apartments with no outdoor water source. Check out details, videos, and extensive explanation and ideas for application at plantbooster.net. Are you short on time when it comes to grocery shopping? Yes, I'm talking to you. Shopwoodmans.com offers online shopping for store pickup or delivery on their over 60,000 plus items at Woodman's Everyday Low Prices. Or online, select a pickup or delivery time and create more time to do what you want. Leave the work to Woodman's. Also, check out the shopwoodmans.com app. You can even make specialist requests like specific sizes of produce. For more information, visit shopwoodmans.com. Root Assassin. 
a garden tool that does all the root functions with its advanced shovel that has serrated edges on both sides. Find out more information at RootAssassinShovel.com. The Gardener's Hollow Leg, the debris and harvesting bag you wear, comes with its own belt attachment, perfect for doing light pruning, weeding, harvesting on the ground or on a ladder, and many other uses. Find out more at TheGardener'sHollowLeg.com. Save 10% by using the word veggies at checkout. Why is rose oil so expensive? This garden fun fact is sponsored by ManureTea.com. Get your three-pack today. Drop the tea bag in water, let it steep, and feed your soil, not your plants. 100% organic. Find out more at ManureTea.com. Always free shipping. It takes 5,000 pounds of fresh rose petals to make just one pound of rose oil. This is not surprising as this is one of the most expensive and precious essential oils on the market. Purple Cow Organics quickly and naturally increases the uptake of nutrients and water to your plants with their new bioactive vegetable supercharger designed to meet the unique needs by helping the living organisms in the soil help plants uptake the nutrients more quickly through their roots and leaves. Find out more at purplecoworganics.com. It's that time to get your lawn lush and green with the Chapin Spreader, the broadcast spreader that outperforms all in their class. Get consistent results year after year as if you had hired your own professional lawn service. Find Chapin Spreaders online or order through your local Home Depot, Lowe's, True Value, or Do It Best Hardware Stores. To see the full line of Chapin Lawn and Garden products, go to www.chapinmfg.com. This season, arm yourself with the better spreader, Chapin. The Tree Diaper is an advanced plant hydration system. It is an innovative device that captures and holds the water around your plants, once full, and hydrates them slowly when the plants need it over a period of 30 days. From half to 30 gallon capacity based on your needs. And easy to install even for a first time gardener. The Tree Diaper reduces weeds, protects plants, enhances root growth, and prevents overwatering. Whether you're growing trees, vegetables, flowers, house plants, in containers, or the ground, your plants will benefit greatly by allowing the Tree Diaper to do the work for you. Find out more at TreeDiaper.com. Made in the USA. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mills also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mills today. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Flame Engineering, Eagle Garden Systems, Bob X, Plant Success, Beans and Barley, MI Gardener, Outpost Natural Food Co-op, Root Assassin, Manure Tea, The Gardener's Hollow Leg. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts Joey and Holly Baird. We're always happy when people call in. We can go to the Ivy Organics Three in One Plant Guard Hotline. Caller, you were on the air. Yes. Well, thank you, sir. Good morning. Good morning. So glad to be on your show again this week, and um, um, blessed and joyful Mother's Day to your wife and uh, the rest of the mothers out there and everyone's family. Thank you. Yes. Uh, well, a couple different things before you get to the catching of the water and everything. Um, uh, if you could speak to Millen's. Uh, Perhaps not, not so much in detail today, but do a show on uh, watermelons and cantaloupe and honeydew melons. But um, the, the um, because I love um, melons there, but I was going to say I love the plums and I love the peaches. But then we came up with the nectarine. So is the is the nectarine a product of the plum and the peach combined? Cross cross um, cross cross breed is what I'm trying to say. Excuse me. And then as far as the yellow meat watermelon. Uh, I know about the last ten years there, these yellow meat watermelons popped up. Is uh, is that somehow a cross breed, cross breed from um, cantaloupe and some other type of melon there? Because I love all those honeydew, cantaloupe, uh, and all those. So if you could speak to those, then and I know you're trying to get to the water there, so I won't keep you too long. But um, I'll listen to you over the air then. Well, thank you very much. Thank for you your very call. much. Have a great weekend. Happy you, Mother's Day. Thank you. You too. 
So, with that being said, we, we, we are planning on doing a vine crop uh, conversation here at the later portions of the month, so we won't get too much into that right now. Peaches and nectarine are actually, um, they're the same. They're not the same, but they are the same. They're the same variety. There's just a slight gene variation between the two. Okay. So it's not, it's not a cross between a peach and a plum as much as it's a, a peach variety. Okay. All right, and then we will address the watermelon here here at the end of the show. So let's get to water capture capturing uh, ideals here. Whenever we want to capture the water on our on our property, we can do this with rain barrels. Now, number one, before we do any of this, we want to make sure that the municipality, the homeowners association, the township that we live in, it is legal to do such. There are places where it is illegal for you to capture rainwater on your property. We're not going to get in the legalities of all of that, but we want to make that. We're assuming that all of that is clear and good to go, green light. Uh, so here are some things we want to know and, and how to capture the rainwater. One, you can do this on a very small scale or a very large scale. Right, definitely. You want to so you want to keep it cheap. You can keep it cheap. If you feel like water collection is expensive or costly or uh, an investment, that's simply not true. You can get rain barrels. Um, the you can so- construct your own with large trash cans, too. Right, you can c- construct them with large trash cans. You can get rain barrels. Um, there's, uh, if you just do a search, rain barrels, put your zip code in. You can do it that way. Um, there's many different places that sell them. Sometimes the city of Milwaukee has a rain barrel uh, sale or promotion or whatnot. So if with the right with the right research, you can find them for sometimes. Cheap. And you want to make sure one, they're food grade, or two, sometimes you can get them from car washes. They have 55 gallon drums that soap has come in. And you clean that out, and it's good to go. Just make sure it's food-grade material that was once in there. So keep it cheap. We're all about making it cheap but making it effective. Two, keep the thing covered. Right. So any sort of open water source will breed mosquitoes. So if you don't have a cover or your rain barrel is not covered, it could breed. It the will. Mo- it will. It will <laughs> breed the mosquito larvae. Like if you like, a lot of times when there's a high mos- the summer with a high mosquito population, they'll say look for any sort of water collection with that's uncovered because that's where the the mosquito nests or whatnot are. Right. So you want to make sure you keep it covered, keep it sealed to help prevent that. You can do that with uh, just a real tight screen, uh, on, you know, a house screen type of thing. You can buy a roll of that, or maybe there's. You know somebody who has an old house that, you know, these are broken or torn. You can use that very simple. Or old storm windows. And, and you don't have to cut the whole lid open. You just need enough for the water to go into the top. Right. So you don't have to, you know, you just need a four, however big, three by four, four by four. You don't have to cut the whole lid off. So keep that in mind. Even with a trash can, you can cut a hole in the lid to capture that rainwater. Okay. So don't, don't, don't choke your flow, basically. That means that if you have a, if you're collecting from a rooftop, that whatever is whatever is draining through from that rooftop, the gutter, um, that you're not the downspout, that there's nothing jammed in there, essentially. Mm-hmm. So if you're like, you know, we've been getting all this rain, I don't have much going on in my rain barrel, you might want to look into that. Right. Now, here's here from the University of Arizona, they did some studies here, and this is how much water really can be captured off of a roof. Holly, you, you looked at these numbers here. Right. So one inch of rain, so say we get one inch of rain, 1,000 square foot roof, Produces 600 gallons of water, so that's that's pretty good. 1,000 square feet is basically um, 100 feet by 10 feet, yeah, so or like, something yeah. like that. Um, yeah, so that's that's a lot. So on the flip side of that, 4,500 square feet lot will receive 2,800 gallons. So if you're letting just the rain fall onto your lot, which is fine, but if you're not collecting it on top of that, you can collect a lot of rain quickly while it's raining and falling also onto your garden. Right, right. So that, that you know, keep that, there are some staggering numbers there uh, in regards to how much rain really falls because we just see it, you know, running down the street, whatever the case is, and, and or running off of our property and we're thinking, oh, it's just going on the storm drain where we've lost that water. But there is a way to hold some of that water back right, and allow so, it to soak in. Right, so there's this, there's this concept that occurs in nature which has a name for it is called swales and what swales are is basically a lower lying area um, that sometimes is done on a slope or just a, like a small ravine that when the rain when the rain happens it cl- kind of collects and it creates there's a like speed a, bump to prevent the water from running through that right, low spot right basically and so you can collect it um, the city of Milwaukee actually has what's called swales built up to increase the wetland and the marsh 
um, ecosystems, and I see them all the time when I go to work there on 107th Street, um, just south of uh, Brownie Road. But they um, that's kind of an example if you ever want to look at one, but it's a way to collect water using more natural uh, situation. Now, when we collect the rainwater off of a roof, number one, this is for plant con- plant use, not human consumption. If you want to go human consumption, there's a whole other level of filtration in which you need to uh, 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 do with this. Um, and people will say, well, what about the asphalt and the tar that's coming off the roof and all that? Again, we talked about the soil buffering capacity. Right. Your soil is, as long as your soil is healthy, it's, and 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 even if it's not super healthy either, but it still has that buffering situation where it's going to kind of filter that out and help prevent the plants from uptaking it too much. Right. And if you're, you know, you're not collect, collecting water and your rain barrel is black from the tar, from the roof type of situation, okay, you got to be, you know, a little, right, little, right. Uh, if a, you're, a if visual you're, on this. Yeah, definitely. So, but with a rain barrel, and if it's a clear rain barrel or milky rain barrel, it's going to be exposed to sunlight. Sunlight uh, develops algae in the water. If you're not drinking this for human consumption, you're not filtrating it for human consumption, and it's just for your plants and garden, algae is great. It helps feed the soil. Right. Algae is great. It is, um, it's basically just you're putting natural material, which is what algae is, onto your soil. And that's okay. That's fine. If you have little green chunks of algae in your rainwater that you're putting on from your rain collection, that's fine. Like Joey said, you don't want the algae if you actually are consuming the water, but we're referring to rain co- water collection based for your garden. And regardless if you want to collect a lot or a little, collect something because something is better than nothing and it's free and just a little investment can help you prolong the plants and save a little bit on your water bill uh, at the end of the growing season. Well, when we come back, our good friend from Nova Scotia, Canada, will be with us. She is an author of three books, and she's a radio host up there. Nikki Jabor will be with us right after this. Use Twitter to reach Joey and Holly at TWVG Show or hashtag TWVG. An Oya is an unglazed porous clay pot with a short neck and a wider belly. Bury your Oya neck deep in your raised bed, container, or ground garden and let the Oya do your watering by releasing water as needed. How? By soil moisture tension for all you techies out there. This is an eco-friendly, efficient, ancient way to water your plants using up to 70% less water than other irrigation methods. It saves you time and is easy to install. Find a retailer through drippingspringsoyas.com. Smart watering, easy gardening. The Handy Safety Knife is a patented, high-quality knife that's worn like a ring, so it's always conveniently at hand and very easy and efficient to work with. That's why you'll find the Handy Safety Knife at work in a wide range of industries and applications. Learn more at HandySafetyKnife.com. Or to place an order for your business, call toll-free 866-294-3424. Use coupon code WVG to get 10% off and free shipping one time use only at HandySafetyKnife.com. Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. BobX is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. BobX deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. BobX can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more? Visit BobX.com. B O B B. BEX.COM. Tall Earth Wood Treatment All-in-One Preservative and Stain offers lifetime protection and creates a unique silver-aged wood finish. All ingredients are non-toxic, eco-friendly, perfect for garden beds and veg trunk. Find out more at TallEarth.com. Free shipping on all orders. Use coupon code WISCONVEG to save 15% off orders placed at TallEarth.com. Shield and Seal Vacuum Sealers and the highest quality vacuum sealing products, unique black and clear and all black bags protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags. Find out more at shieldandseal.com. Zaz Products, offering great quality supplements that can help personal health and increase longevity. Committed to bringing you the highest quality products at the lowest price. Find out more at zazproducts.com. 
Eco Garden Systems is a revolutionary way to grow food. A fully contained raised platform with a conventional watering system. Solar power unit optional. Made from recycled material in the U.S., Eco Garden Systems raised garden bed offers sustainable organic gardening that is environmentally sound, quick and easy to set up, maintain, and fun to use. Fill your garden with soil and plant your seeds. Your Eco Garden will take care of the rest. Can set up in backyard, patio, and even your driveway. Any level surface. For more information, visit EcoGardenSystems.com. Use coupon code WIVEG125 to save $125 and get free shipping. A $250 value on the purchase of an Eco Garden original garden unit available only in stone color. Purchases must be made to the website EcoGardenSystems.com forward slash store. Offer valid through December 31st, 2018. Available to the contiguous United States. Beans and Barley Marketing Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side of the greater Milwaukee area, where you can find all you need from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh squeezed carrot juice. The health food stores hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cards, books, and a knowledgeable staff. Catering available, open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414 and online at beansandbarley.com. Boss Tools wants to help you grow your own food. From seed starting supplies, hand tools, drip irrigation, harvesting equipment, and a complete line of all-natural pest control solutions, they've got you covered. Keep your garden weed-free with their time-tested, American-made wheel hose that are built to last a lifetime. And the Precision Garden Seeders have proven design for planting a wide variety of seeds. Hosh Tools has what you need to get the most out of your growing space, large or small. Free shipping and outstanding customer service. Shop online or request a free catalog at hostools.com. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Haas Tools, Tree Diaper, Root Maker, Seeding Square, Rebel Green, Dripping Springs Oya, Zaz Products, Shield and Seal, Pomona Universal Pectin. Find all sponsors at thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center is the place for all your garden needs. We were there last Saturday for their annual spring kickoff. We were up there on the stage. We uh, want to say hi to those who stopped by and, and inc- uh, told us that we in- encouraged them and uh, to get back in the garden yeah, and those was, who listen to the show on a regular basis. It was a lot of fun. They had and they had all of their plants and everything there. They're really they're really set for spring. So if you well, have, they know what they're doing too. That makes a difference. Doing, and they have a knowledgeable staff. Right. They have uh, just a ton of plants. They they focus on gardening. It's not like lumber's in one department. It's not a big box store. They, this is have, what they do. They have cool little things you can add to your garden. Uh, decorative. Decorative things. Yeah. Doodads, whatnots. So, is, um, that a, is that a scientific term? It doodad? is a scientific. Oh. Mm-hmm. So uh, you can well, we'll, we will be there again yeah, this we'll there Wednesday, Wednesday at 6.30. 6, at 6.30, we're going to talk about um, 10 common, 10 common vegetable, 10 prom, common problems that you may have in your vegetable we'll, garden. We will have some giveaways as and well. We'll have some giveaways. So yeah, certainly you come. can go to Blue Mel's at 4930 West Loomis Road, just south of Green, uh, just south of Layton in Greenfield, and you can call 414-282-4220 or visit bluemills.com. Don't worry about it. If you have children, bring them along. They can play in the enclosed, safe playground while you learn about the 10 common problems you're going to face in your vegetable garden and how you can solve them. So, Holly, let's go to the Ivy Organics 31 Plant Guard Hotline and go to Nova Scotia, Canada, and bring in our next guest. So, Nikki Jabour is an author, a radio show host, and um, has a great website all about gardening. She's well known for her year-round vegetable gardener book. She has a couple other books under her belt, including her newest book, uh, Veggie Garden Remix, 224 New Plants to Shake Up Your Garden and Add Variety. She's from Nova Scotia, Canada. Welcome to the program, Nikki. Hey, Holly and Joey. How are you guys doing? We are doing well. We appreciate you taking time out of your day. I know you got a lot of stuff going on to join us and our listeners and uh, teach some of your wisdom with all of us. Oh, well, thanks. i got to say, this is such a great time of the year to be a vegetable gardener, isn't it? Well, absolutely. And, and we talk about on the program here a lot about mulch and good mulches mm-hmm. and bad mulches. As people start getting into their gardens here, what is the most, why is mulch so important and what are some benefits uh, that we can uh, take uh, even as we go into the warmer portions of the year? You know, I, I'm a big mulcher, and I know you guys are as well because there's so many benefits to mulch. 
Um, so, it, like, at this time of the year, you know, when I'm starting to plant my tomatoes, another week or so, they get mulched immediately because that will just cover the soil with shredded leaves or straw, and it kind of breaks up, um, you know, the cycle of soil-borne diseases. So by mulching your soil, you're helping prevent the spread of diseases, but it also helps keep the soil moist because it locks in that soil moisture. It prevents weed growth, which is always a good thing. Um, so there's a lot of benefits to mulching your vegetables. So I do try to do a lot of mulching, and in the fall, you know, I'm going around taking back the leaves, people's, you know, curbsides, and I'm mulching them with my mower and bagging them up again. And so I have a pile of shredded leaves in my garden. And I also have a pile of straw bales I bought last fall. And those are what I'm going to use this year mainly for my mulching. But, again, it's just a gardener's best friend because it cuts down on a lot of work. And a lot of times those leaves, uh, we, we capture all the leaves. The neighbors think maybe we're crazy. We brought in calculated <laughs> 2,000 pounds of leaves in our garden this year, untreaded. Oh. Um, and we clean up both sides of the street and, and down the block. But uh, <laughs> we, you, And you have to be smart about this. You just can't take any leaves you want to you know leave the large yard debris you want to leave alone uh we yeah. don't shred our leaves if you're in the states and we're going to talk about the chemical ban there in, in nova scotia and canada mm -hmm. we have to be aware of what we're putting on our lawns if we're going to incorporate that into our compost or garden but your favorite is leaves or straw what would you if you had to pick one or the other oh my god that's a hard question <laughs> i think i would go for leaves only because the worms love to break down leaves as well so it really attracts them um, the worms. So I would go for leaves if, if I had to pick one. Um, but I also use mulch other times of the year, too. I mean, I use it in winter for mulching with root crops and other types of vegetables. So there's a lot of ways you can use mulch. So like you, I can never get enough leaves and I can never get enough straw because there's always just so many ways to use it. You can even use it in your pathways to keep down weeds and keep your boots clean as you're working in the garden. So it really is a gardener's best friend. Great. Now, um, you have a chemical ban by where, where you are or where you are. What do you use for weeds, harmful bugs, et cetera, uh, without using chemicals? Yeah, I know. Like, you haven't been able to buy weed and feed here for, I don't know, 15 years at least. Yeah, so we don't have anything like weed and feed for your lawns. And, um, you know, at first a lot of people were worried that the dandelions were going to take over the world. And you know what? They didn't. <laughs> so, um, you know, yeah, there's dandelions here and there. And, and a lot of people forage for them now and eat them. And, you know, they, they feed the early bees. So people had to get a little more relaxed, I think, about their lawn expectations. A lot of people here plant a mixed lawn with things like white dust clover to keep down uh, weeds and, and keep that nice dark green color all the time. And in my vegetable garden, um, you know, I'm totally organic. I was even before the chemical ban. I think I've gotten smarter the past 10 or 15 years, though, because I've learned a lot and read a lot. And so I include a lot of uh, bee-friendly plants in my food garden, a lot of flowers to attract bees and beneficial insects. And I find the beneficial insects generally take care of the bad bugs. So I don't have a lot of bad bugs. Um, you know, I do get every once in a while an infestation, and if it's something that's not going to be controlled by, you know, a good bug population, then I'll hand pick. Um, you know, slugs are a problem for me. Um, you know, but generally speaking, I, I maybe resort to a soapy spray once every three or four years. So, you know, by including lots of these good plants to attract the beneficial and bees and the pollinators, it's kind of balanced my garden. And so, I don't have a big pest problem, even though I have twenty raised beds in my garden. Now you say you, you expanded your your raised bed garden tremendously yeah. last year by about a thousand square feet. What? How do you build your soil? Obviously, you're you're not going to bring in new compost every year and rebuild these beds. What's the key here to getting that soil as rich in nutrients as possible? Yeah, that was my big dig. So we bulldozed my old garden, but we saved all the good soil that I had been working on for about you know fourteen, fifteen years at that point, and put in a big pile. So when we built the new twenty raised beds. We backfilled with that good soil, but it wasn't enough, of course. So um, I did buy some local organic garden soil, and then I added lots of chopped leaves to the soil. You know, I added some of my own homemade compost. I added some composted manures. So I do add a lot of natural amendments to my soil um, in the spring, but also between successive crops. So if I plant early peas, when those come out, I'll add something else to the soil, maybe a little aged manure or some compost before I plant something else in that same space. Um, and our soils here are also acidic, so I do have to lime every year. Um, but I'm a big believer in the natural, you know, um, amendments to use, of course. You know, so there's so many of those you can use to enrich your soil. Even seaweed, because I'm a stone's throw from the ocean, so I can collect seaweed and add that to my compost pile or to my garden in the fall to break down all winter long. Um, so just keep adding natural amendments to your soil. And, uh, you know, I avoid chemical-based fertilizers because I really want to, you know, kind of encourage that, you know, the, the uh, fungi and the bacteria in the soil to take off and, and, and help nourish my plants. Right, and in addition to the, the chemical-free fertilizer, you don't have to worry about if you do accidentally over-fertilize, over it's not going to burn <laughs> the plants. 
true. Uh, yeah, there's definitely not generally a problem with organics. Um, uh, you know, and when I say manure, I just say aged manure mm-hmm. because fresh manure A can burn plants and B introduce harmful organisms you don't want on your food. So make sure if you're using manure, it's at least a year old. And I usually use either uh, aged cow manure or aged sheep manure, but. You know, that's my Mother's Day present every year, which I think is the best present you could give a girl, a truckload of aged manure. I'm just saying. Good stuff. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, and, and now in your newest book, Veggie Garden Remix, you give a lot of ideas on a large varieties of possibly atypical vegetables to grow. What are some of your favorites you were surprised to possibly uh, that you found that are growing in a northern climate? Yeah, I was surprised by a lot <laughs> because this book was kind of inspired by my mother-in-law, who's from Lebanon. And so, you know, basically I wanted to grow plants that she would know, like food plants that she would recognize. And I didn't honestly expect a lot of success, um, but I was super surprised that um, I did have a lot of success. You know, my success has far outstripped any failures. And so we grow Lebanese cucumber melons and za'atar. Um, you know, I grow Lebanese gourds for, that we use like summer squash. You know, and then I grow things like ground cherries and inca berries and tomatillos and all these things that, you know, as a gardener in Nova Scotia, as a teenager, you know, and, and even, you know, uh, before, we didn't grow these things in our gardens. You know, it was tomatoes and beets and carrots and potatoes. And so to try all these wonderful global crops, it has just expanded, you know, my cooking so wonderfully. Um, you know, my kids love all the variety as well. And it just keeps my vegetable garden interesting. You know, you don't, we tend to get in a bit of a rut, I think, sometimes. So, you know, the cucumelons. I love cucumelons. I talk about them all the time. And everybody loves the cucumelons in our garden. Plus, you know, the ground cherries are very popular because uh, they're so sweet and delicious and so easy to grow. If you can grow a cherry tomato, you can grow a ground cherry. So um, also Indian cucumbers and all the greens from China and Japan and Korea. So uh, if, if I have one message from this book, it's just try at least one new thing in your garden this year because it should be your, your fun experimental little area where you can try something new and, and just have fun. And that's I'm a big believer in playing in your garden. I want to touch on the ground cherries for a minute. That's something yeah. that we're going to <clears throat> be growing this year for the very first time. Explain what a ground cherry is and what kind of flavor, because I understand it's kind of like a pineapple, vanilla, caramel yeah. type of taste. Okay, How, how does a ground cherry grow, grow essentially here? It's a tomato relative, so it kind of it's an interesting looking plant. It grows up for about a foot and a half, and then it grows out for about three feet, kind of like an umbrella. Um, but it produces all these wonderful little uh, husks, and inside the protective papery husks are the fruits, and they're about the size of a marble, and they do taste like pineapple, vanilla, sometimes the overtone of peach. Um, and when they're really ripe, it's like butterscotch. They're so good. We eat them from the garden. I dip them in chocolate. We make jam from them and sauces, and we do lots of things with the ground cherries. They are so popular in our garden. I love them so much. Um, and they're easy to grow. So if you can grow, again, cherry tomato, you can grow a grand cherry. Sunshine, decent soil. And they start producing for me in August, and they go until late October. Uh, so we get quite a large bumper crop of, cher- of uh, grand cherry. I'm going to jump back to your raised beds here. A lot of people want to start a garden, and, and they want to go raise beds because that's a, a, an in- basically instantaneous garden. You don't have to yeah. dig the soil, all that. What's the biggest mistake people make when they say, hey, okay, I'm going to put a raised bed in the backyard? Um, I think if you're going to grow food, make sure you find the sun. Because, you know, if you're putting a raised bed in the backyard and it's partially shady or under big trees, you're not going to have a lot of success unless you just grow leafy green. So look for the sunshine. I also, underneath my raised beds, and mine are 4 by 8 or 4 by 10, and they're 16 inches tall. There are some plans for it on my website, Savvy Gardening. You can see my design. Um, You know, I put cardboard underneath before I filled with the soil to help prevent weeds because I certainly have a lot of perennial forest weeds in my area, so I want to prevent that. Um, so that's important. And, you know, I think that's really the most important considerations. Look for the sunshine. Uh, and raised beds, of course, you know, they offer so many benefits. They drain well. They warm up early. I mean, I have 20 raised beds, and I spend less than, say, an hour and a half a week working in my garden because, you know, uh, the plants are planted close together. I don't have a lot of weeds because I stay on top of it. So there's not a lot of maintenance to a raised bed. It's definitely an easier way to grow food. Definitely. Um, thanks for that information. Now tell us how to find you, your book, et cetera, uh, so that people can get all your great information. Yeah, thanks, Holly. Um, so people can find me online, of course, at SavvyGardening.com. is my website I own with a couple other garden writers, SavvyGardening.com. And, um, of course, you can also find me, at my books in any bookstore across North America, uh, as well as online, all the usual places online. Um, and uh, I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and uh, Facebook, of course, as well. Love to hear from people there. We, uh, you know, I know we're in Nova Scotia, kind of far from you guys, but we have a lot of listeners, even in your neck of the woods, that listen to my radio show every Sunday uh, online because it airs live online, which is fun. So 
um, you know, you can always tune into that as well, and there's information at NikkiJabor.com. Yeah, your three books are, are The Year-Round Vegetable Gardener, and then yeah. uh, I'm, I'm... Groundbreaking Food Garden. There you go, and then the 224 Plants, uh, the Veggie Garden Mix at the 224 Plants to shake up your vegetable garden. And if, if you're able to grow them in Nova Scotia, Canada, we should have no <laughs> problem growing them here in, in the upper Midwest of the United States. Exactly. <laughs> well, Nikki, we greatly yeah. appreciate your time and your knowledge, not only for Holly and myself, but all of our listeners as well. Oh, thank you so much. You guys are so inspiring. I love all that you do. So thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Absolutely. Thank you. And when we come back, it's your garden questions and our garden answers right after this. If you have a gardening question, now is the time to call in on the IVOrganics.com 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline at 414-444-5250. I know you're looking for an alternative to harsh chemicals, but you want professional strength props. BioSafe's Garden Line gives you just that. Professionally used for 20 years, available to homeowners. Organic solutions that are effective. They offer an array of eco-friendly products from plant food, fertilizer, to one-of-a-kind herbicides, organic weed killer. BioSafe's products can be used around children, pets, wildlife, so you can enjoy your yard more. Grow stronger, healthier with BioSafe. Find us on Facebook at BioSafe home and garden and visit us at biosafe.net to learn more get 10 percent off your next purchase at biosafe.net by using coupon code twvg at checkout the number one key to healthy productive plants are the roots starting from seed to full-grown plants rootmaker.com has the answer from seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots creating a fabulous root system Never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. Rootmaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit Rootmaker.com. Pomona's Universal Pectin is high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar, honey, or any alternative sweetener you'd like. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Available at most natural food stores and online. Rebel Green, responsibly made natural products that are good for you and the environment. Made in the USA, plant-based, vegan, and always toxic-free. Find out more at rebelgreen.com. Flame Engineering, home of the weed dragon, the perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use. For killing weeds, no need to pull or spray. 100 other uses. Find out more at flameengineering.com. Wouldn't you love to get more from your growing space? By utilizing the square foot garden method and properly spacing your plants, Seeding Square will optimize and organize your veggie garden to grow more greens and less weeds. The square foot color-coded seed spacer is a great tool for any garden, ground, container, or raised bed, and all experience levels, even little green thumbs. For more information, visit SeedingSquare.com. Seeding Square is gardening made simple. Mycorrhizae is a beneficial fungus from PlantSuccessOrganics.com that will greatly increase your plant's germination, ability, and healthier root structure. You can increase seed sprouting, root growth, and general plant germination. Mycorrhizae can be used with hydroponic root cutting, seed sprouting, cocoa core, and soil. PlantSuccessOrganics.com carries powder, granule, and tablet form of mycorrhizae. Increase the level of mycorrhizae in your soil to give your plant the optimal opportunity to produce incredible harvests. For more information and to purchase, visit PlantSuccessOrganics.com. Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just 99 cents at migardener.com. Now with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, and organic flower, vegetable, and herb seeds available year-round. Pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to migardener.com for seeds and garden needs, tools, and special blend fertilizers. MIGardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is brought to you by the following. Handy Safety Knife. BioSafe. Tall Earth. Chapin International. The Plant Booster. Ivy Organics. Woodman's Market. Blue Mel's Landscaping Garden Center. Purple Cow Organics. 
Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. You can always give us a call on the IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline. Uh, we've got a few minutes at the top of the hour. We do have a number of questions come in this week. Uh, on the uh, you can IV Organics is what, Holly? Ivy Organic 3-1 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields prune to damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe and organic. Visit To find out more, you can visit ivyorganics.com. You can call us right now with your question at 414-444-5250. And for the gentleman that just called in uh, before, was that our second break yes. or whatever? Yeah. Um, he had a question about uh, the yellow watermelon, the yellow flesh watermelon, and that is just a hybrid. So basically a hybrid is when a botanist or horticulturist takes two plant varieties to create one plant, and that's how you get that yellow skin or yellow flesh watermelon. So it's not a cross between a cantaloupe or a no, watermelon. No, it's just, it's just, okay. a, just a different <clears throat> variety. Ad, uh, we, we get a number of questions come in through Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, email. Adam emailed us at twvgshow at gmail.com. Uh, he said, I just listened to your show about mulching last week. I know this is, uh, I know this past fall you added leaves as mulch for your summer garden. Would, would shredding the leaves first, uh, be worth the while or will it, they decompose too quickly? Well, if you're using your leaves for mulch, then, and you don't want them to break down too fast, then you don't want to shred them. If you want them to break down faster, then you shred them. You're just aiding in the breakdown process. So smaller particles. Small particles faster, it's going to break down. We have shredded ours before, but now we don't because simply we don't have the time. Um, and just also, get just the get them in the garden. And also because we want to utilize them as mulch until as long as possible. Yeah, they will break down. If you, They're laying on the soil. They're about eight inches thick. If you remove them on top of the soil, the worms are there eating the leaves. You physically can see the worms go underground as soon as they get exposed to light. Uh, Jill asks, I'm doing square foot gardening for the first time this year, and I don't want to put a zucchini in my raised bed, so I was going to try it in containers. What size of container would you recommend or do I need? Well, uh, every bit of a 20-gallon a grow bag would be ideal. Uh, that would be a, the ideal size. You can get away with 15, but 20 Could gallon, you use like a 5-gallon bucket? 5-gallon bucket you could, but you really, they, they need a lot of root I think nutrients. If you, if you had really healthy potting soil, right. compost, and like that, I think you could get away with a five-gallon bucket with holes drilled Right, in. if you're going to consistently water. If yeah, you're right. going to, like, just set it in the back by the garden and you're going to forget about it, give them more massive soil, more water retention in that Definitely, soil. Definitely, yeah, be mindful of, of what you're planting in. Um, so is there a good place, Sandra wants to know, is there a good place to get a large supply of fertilizers? I'm doing garden for the first time. And I need to obtain um, more fertilizer after a soil test, but I think I need in bulk about one third of an acre. Um, obviously, it's going to be cheaper to buy in bulk. So if you just call your local farm store or your feed store, they're going to be able to direct you if you're going to need that poundage or that bulk variety. Because if you need hundreds of pounds, it doesn't. It's not very affordable to buy it in 20 pounds or 50 pound increments. So I would start with the, your your local farm store, your local feed store, and then they can direct you in the direction in which you need to go. They to can get, direct you in the direction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they'll get you mm-hmm. to. The, they, they will advise you on where you right, need to go definitely. for that bulk. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so there. Uh, cor- we had a corn question come in. Yeah, and actually this was at one of our talks. They um, bought this so, uh, some kind of hybrid. What was it called? They're, they're F1. F1. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So but they want to know because they live out and c- closer to a rural area, and they want to know if their corn would be pollinated with uh, maybe agricultural corn. And, yes, corn can pollinate itself within a half a mile to a mile based on the wind, the speed, direction. Now, it's not a big deal if you're not saving. Well, I, if it's an F1 corn, you don't want to save it because it's a hybrid. Right. If it's an heirloom corn that you're wanting to save, you want to make sure your pollination is – you're not going to be pollinating with – the, the agricultural genetically modified corn because you can't have GMOs that will cross into your your bed and then there could be legalities issues. I mean, not with, you know, the big chemical companies, but that is an issue if you're concerned about consuming genetically modified crops uh, in your garden. All right, the next question. What are your thoughts on no-till gardening? Well, no-till gardening or low-till 
gardening is the method of gardening where you're not tilling. You're not turning the soil over at the beginning of the year or every other week or every month. You're planting your plants in already established, very rich organic matter, and you don't have to worry about that. Now, this works great if you're able to do it, if you've got a good tilth in your soil base. Let's say you're growing in raised beds. There's no need to flip the soil over each year or multiple times a year. You're By opening the soil up, you're exposing the microbial life to the atmosphere and you're killing a certain portion of that off. You're also disrupting the soil web, things that we can see and can't see. Now, there are certain times where you're going to have to dig the soil if if you're you know going to plant potatoes or harvest potatoes or harvest Jerusalem artichokes or root crop. There are some disturbances that you have to occur in the soil. But if you can avoid it, we feel that that's the best way to go. And it's a minimal amount of work on our end if we don't have to sit there and either spade the garden or till the garden in that manner. Uh, where is a good place in which you can purchase tomatillo plants? I want to grow them for the first year after seeing your video last year. Uh, well, any of your independent garden centers carry them. Some uh, big box stores carry them. I know Blue Mills has uh, them available uh, in Greenfield outside uh, of the Milwaukee area there. Uh, let's see here. I planted uh, zucchini and cucumbers, or I had zucchini and cucumbers that ended up with a zucumber or a cuzini. Is this because I planted the cucumbers and zucchini too close together? Well, what that is reference is that it's a cross. They crossed over, and you can get this with zucchini and other uh, squash family plants. If you are planting your seeds too close, in this instance, cucumber and a cucumber and zucchini planted too close, they cross-pollinated with each other, and they, they got a morph. Now, if you're just growing your plants this year and you're going to eat them and you're not save the seeds, don't worry about it. You're totally fine. What this uh, is predominantly in response to is if you are saving your seeds this year to plant next year, that cross is genetically inbound into the seed because nature has crossed those two plants and you're going to grow a, a morph of a zucchini cucumber or a zucchini pumpkin or whatever the case is. Uh, typically, they don't have great flavor. Because they're not, you know, the, based on how you uh, how your taste buds are on it. So you can plant them uh, as close as you want to. If you're not going to save the seeds, if you are going to save the seeds, like cucumbers, uh, you need to space them a, a general distance apart. If you're going to save cucumber seeds, they cross very easily uh, in that. So again, like just like corn, if you're going to grow multiple different varieties of corn this year and you're not going to save the seed, don't worry about it. You're totally fine on that. Uh, what is the ideal material? to add to your grow area. Thank you. Well, as we always say, uh, anything organic-based, compost, uh, you can get purple cow compost. Uh, it's a uh, great compost to mix in with your, ra uh, in, put in your raised beds, your containers, or work into your native soil. Chemical-free, uh, seed-free, dry grass clippings, coffee grounds uh, to mix them in. Uh, the, co the, the compost you can just lay on top. The coffee grounds you want to mix in because the atmosphere will uh, rob the coffee grounds of that 2% about 2% nitrogen that they contain on that. And the uh, grass clippings and leaves you can mix in or you can lay on top and let them naturally break down into the soil. Well, we are out of time, and we certainly always appreciate your time and joining us each Saturday morning and telling your friends about us. Next week, we will be discussing composting, large, small, what we can do, what we can't do, what's good and what's bad when it comes to composting, as well as... Farmer's markets, we're getting to that time. We're going to go over the things you should know before you go to a farmer's market and what to expect when you go to a farmer's market, as well as author and blogger Carol Mitchell will be with us from Indiana. Miss any portion of this program or want to revisit it in its entirety, you can find that underneath the radio tab at the top of the website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. Look for an indi individual interview or specific topic. Find that on the highlight tab on the right-hand side. Until next week, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. You've been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. Tell a friend and join Joy and Holly again next week so we can all grow together. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is a production of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcast, live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM, Courier Communications Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.